Welcome to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. Every week, I'll be sitting down with a sales executive where they'll share their stories and experiences that produce game-changing results. Let's be honest, sales can be a tough game. I'm sure at some point, we've all delivered a less than stellar demo, been ghosted by a client or two, and sometimes, maybe we did more talking than listening. And that's where I can help. The stories and insights our guests share can be applied to your own business, your territory, or with your team, so you're not reinventing the wheel. Our weekly tactics and strategies help you get out of your head and start creating your own path towards game-changing results. Welcome back to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. Now we are continuing into 2024, and I trust that everyone's goal setting, and I don't like to say New Year's resolutions, but whatever you've set forth for yourself, the new year, you're continuing on. You haven't fallen off the wagon. You haven't fallen into the statistic of those who start off the gym. Uh, I don't even know the number, but it's pretty high of, of those who tap out, you know, three weeks into it. So hopefully you're still going strong. And for those of you who might, you know, be struggling or starting really strong and start teetering off or or really finding it difficult to maintain the pace and and maybe see that future vision. It might not be strong enough. You know, maybe the the juice isn't worth a squeeze. And so I'm here today to give you three ways and three three reasons to really help help you going strong. And and where this is coming from is is for me, I'm just coming off um, an annual wellness trip that I take with with two girls that I've known for two of my my best friends that I've known for over 30 years. And we go on a wellness retreat. We have busy lives. We're busy um, business owners, parents. And um, we go away for a week and we invest in ourselves and we fill our cup. You know, like we've heard that whole put your oxygen mask on first. We do that. We do wellness. We do a lot of working out, um, exercise, but we're really filling up our vessels and filling up our cups and whatever that is, because we're all different. But when we come back, we are fully ready and prepared to start the new year. So although we're three weeks into January, this is kind of where I'm really starting on coming back full um, and and ready on all cylinders to take on a great, a great year because I've taken the time intentionally to give myself what I need. And I don't chintz out on that because I, I know myself and I know the importance of mindset, of intentionality, um, and what it does for me, my family, my business, my friends. And so um, here I am to share three ways that we can continue playing the long game um, with the goals, the desires that we've set forth for ourselves in 2024 and and prevent ourselves from, you know, playing small, throwing the towel in early. And a lot of this definitely stemmed from the trip to St. Lucia I just came back from. But it also, um, I read a quote, um, from Al Hel- uh, sorry, Hal Elrod, and it says, success is something you attract by the person you become. And this really struck me because I think about all my goals and aspirations, and I have pretty lofty ones this year. And in some of them, I'm not that person yet, but it doesn't mean I shy away and say, oh, well, then that's not for me. It's who do I need to become? What, what skill sets do I need to develop? What techniques do I need to learn? Who do I need to meet? What uh, groups and associations do I have to join? Because I'm not that person yet. But, but I'm, uh, now that I'm aware of who I need to become, like the work has started. And so I don't shy away from that. But some people just have this box and they're like, well, that's not within the, the confines of this box. And what, if, if that's you, I would invite you to think bigger, think beyond the box. And even think about, you know, some of the goals uh, and successes you've achieved now, you know, or even in 2023, you know, you might have come to had those visions two years before, but you weren't that person. And so you became that person. So in 2023, you're able to achieve these goals because you worked on yourself, you developed yourself and you grew or expanded into the person you needed to be because you weren't that person. That person that you were a few years ago wasn't capable of achieving the goals of doing whatever that lofty goal was. And so I would say, who do you need to become? Um, And in some instances, you're almost there. In some instances, you might think that's never going to be me. And I would challenge you to say, absolutely. If if it's possible for one, it's possible for many. And so the three areas that we can focus on to really play the long game, bet on ourselves, and achieve these goals uh, for 2024 
uh, are three areas. And the first one is to have a plan, have a goal, and not start the year as a continuation of last year and just, well, you know, whatever I worked on there. No, who, who do you need to become this year? Okay, that's, that's whatever that is or whoever that is. What is the goal to achieve that? What is the, the outcome? What results do you need to achieve? That's the, the big picture. But then more importantly, you know, what are those activities, the behaviors, the thoughts that have to go into that daily? And this is where the big thing happens. So if anyone's read uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear, this is exactly this. How can we get addicted to the process? So if we are trying to grow our business, if we are trying to grow our monthly or annual revenue, we need to we need to hit that. We need to determine what that number is. It's important. But then we need to determine what activities, what behaviors, what tactics do I need to be doing daily that I'm going to be measuring. And this is where I'm going to get addicted to the process. So I'm going to keep my mind and my eye definitely on the side the, on the result, the end result, but I'm more focused on getting addicted to the process. So I'm meeting it with some resistance at first because it's new. It might be uncomfortable. I might not like the daily grind of it all, but over time I start getting used to it. Um, and it's not so much friction associated with it. I don't hate it as much because I'm doing it more often. And what happens is it becomes automated. And so think about business. You know, when you, you hate cold calling, you might um, not enjoy negotiating. You might, uh, if you're a sales leader, ha- not enjoy confrontation or having difficult conversations with your teams. These are hard things. But when you can get addicted to the process and really start working towards them, they become less hard. But I think if you don't know where you're aiming for, you're just doing, you're doing so many things. You're, you're kind of jack of all trades, Jill of none, and you're busy, but you're not productive. You're not, you're not achieving anything and you're not making any movement or advancements because you don't, you haven't identified or defined where you want to go. So that first one is define your goals. Definitely. And I would segment them out. Are they financial goals uh, for your business? Are they relationship goals? Um, are they fitness goals, spiritual goals? You know, whatever you have to do and then and then really get addicted to the process so that every day you show up and you're incrementally moving the needles. And there's some days you might think, oh, you know, I, I don't notice anything different. But over over time, over five to seven days or nine days, you realize, you know, I, I, I'm seeing slight movement here. But you're also feeling good about yourself. And you notice, like for me, um, exercise is something in the morning that I don't negotiate with myself. And I can truly say now it's automated. So once you get to that level of automation where you just get up and you don't think about it, you can remove that and you can replace something that's still you're met with friction. So something that's not automated yet. What is that? So you're always working on getting to that automated point. And for me, if you're thinking about, you know, fitness and mindset, that that would be meditation. I'm not automated yet yet for that. You know, I still, it still takes work for me. It's still effort. And when I, when I manage that, then I can move that up. So I'm continually freeing things up as I achieve them to the level of automation where it's effortless. And so then that's a getting addicted to the process. But as I'm doing that, I'm also achieving the, the big results. So th- definitely the first one is have a goal. Otherwise it's like getting into your car and just driving. Where are you going? How do you know when you get there? Um, and then what is the path to get there? So this is the process uh, and really getting addicted to it, showing up, showing up every day. And uh, and that leads me to the second goal. Uh, the second tip is doing hard things. And one, um, I, I had listened to a podcast a few weeks ago and I had never heard of this man before, David Goggins, and perhaps you've heard of him and he definitely is in the one percenter. And he is, oh God, Navy SEAL runner. He's achieved and overcome every obstacle known to to man. And he talks about um, the ACC, the um, anterior cingulate cortex. And it's a part of the brain that we, we build when we do hard things or things that we don't like. And we actually have two of them in the brain. And so the example they were using is when you work out or he hates run. He's, he runs 72, 75 hours straight, but he hates running. And so although he can, he hates it, what he's doing, he's, he's building this ACC up because he's doing hard things that he hates to do. And so 
we're building it up. But what happens in the brain is when we start to like it, we stop building it. So he's continuing to build it because he, he still hates it. So what this message is telling you is what hard things can we be doing? Because what we're doing is we're actually building this ACC in our brain and, until we eventually like it. We may never like it, but we have to still show up. And as Glennon Doyle says, um, we can do hard things. And so what are those hard things for you? And are you shying away from them? Or are you saying like, every day I'm going to show up, whether I like it or not, I'm going to eat the frog. And these things might be some of the things we talked about before. You know, are you, if you have call reluctance and you're afraid to get on the call, pick up the phone, you know, get it, get in the mind frame that you need to uh, realize it's not about you, but we can do hard things. And when you're, when you're working, um, in that area of discomfort, you're continuing to build the ACC, um, having difficult conversations. If someone is introverted, are they afraid to speak up? Are they afraid to ask questions? How can you continue to lean into that discomfort? If you don't like running, if you don't like exercising, if you don't like cold plunging, if you don't like dry January, these are all hard things, but don't shy away from them. Because again, if we go back to that quote and we are trying to success is something you attract by the person you become you are not going to become that person if you don't put yourself into situations that you haven't been in before and when they're hard not only are you building resistance you're taking yourself to a level to truly see what you're capable of and as you're doing that you're continuing to build this interior uh, cingulate cortex until you like it and then you start building it and that's okay because then there's many things I'm sure that we hate that we continue to build. But the point here is, are we playing it safe? Are we playing it small? Are we doing the same things that yielded the success to get us where we are today? That's not enough if you want to become next level, if you want to get expansion. And for some people, they might be thinking, you know what? I'm okay. I'm okay where I'm at. And I would say for most people listening to this podcast, that's not who we are because we are overachievers. We want to push through these barriers and really say, no, no, I, I am destined for greatness. I believe that I am way more capable, but I have to dig deep. I have to do hard, uncomfortable things daily to become the person that's going to get the level of a success that, that I'm worthy of and that I deserve. And so the third part, so a quick summary, if we, we have a goal, um, define, you know, that big picture, get addicted to the process, the first step. The second part is build in hard things, you know, so that we can push past these limits and really see what we're truly capable of. And as we're doing that, we continue to build the ACC, the anterior cingulate cortex part of the brain. And the third one is, you know, how can we really anchor ourselves to start our day with intention? that we are not leaving things up to chance, that we are unwavering in who we are. So when we put our feet on the ground, when we get out of bed and we put our feet on the ground, we start that grounding process. And the only way we can do that is if we have some form of a morning routine. And there's so many people I know and they get out of bed and they just, they turn on their phone right away. And basically what you're saying is the way in which I want to show up and what's important to me this is it's not important. Other people's opinion perspective is more important. So let's just let everybody in and let them take me, you know, and let them sway me and influence me before I even determine and set my, my needs, my desires, my intentions for the day. And it's so wrong. And there's so many studies that show the importance of a morning routine. So if this is you and I, then it might be to some extent, I'm going to invite you to, to take a few uh, of these rituals and in any order and just really start your day with intention so that you are starting to attract the level of success by the person you're becoming because you're being intentional with your with starting off your day. And so I'll share a few and some of these are not some of these. These are from The Miracle Morning um, by Hal Elrod. And most other influencers and gurus are suggesting the same thing. Uh, if you haven't read his book, I would highly recommend it. For those watching um, YouTube, this is the book here. I'm holding it up. But he's got an acronym, and it's SAVERS, uh, S-A-V-E-R-S. And the first one is silence. So some form of meditation, prayer, quietening, right when you get out, because your subconscious is so primed right here. I mean, basically, the state in which you go to bed at uh, is is very important. So that's why even even 
morning routine is important, but going to bed and what you put in your brain before. So if you're looking at your phone, or if you're watching the news, if you're having negative thoughts, you're programming your brain and your subconscious, that's how you're going to wake up. And so whatever you did the night before, you know, it's going to set how you're going to wake up the next day. And so can you get into silence? Can you have some form of meditation, prayer, just quietening the, the mind? Um, start with gratitude. Again, um, grateful for another day, grateful for waking up. Uh, so that's the S. The A, A in savers is affirmations. Okay, so what kind of positive affirmations can you start your day with that really ground you, lift you up and allow you to show up to be the person that you need to be for that day. So you could have different affirmations if you need to be um, empathetic today, if you need to be powerful today, if you need to be confident today. But when you think about an affirmation, um, basically you're setting a positive, an I am statement. Um, I am powerful. I am confident. And when you look at, if some people might think, well, how do I know those work? Well, I would say, Look at the way in which you respond to some of your negative thoughts, your limiting beliefs, and the impact they have. So if you're seeing your negative thoughts, your self-doubt, and that playing out in your actions, your decisions, your behaviors, well, what if you adopted the reverse? And what if you programmed or thought positive thoughts? Could it be possible that your activities, your outcomes could be positive? And it's true that they could be. So what affirmations can you say And the V, how can you pair that with visualization? So as you're saying these powerful statements about yourself, can you see them? Can you see your future state? You know, can you visualize what that person looks like? And can you not only see it, can you marry that vision with what you feel? Do you feel empowered? Do you feel confident that you've achieved that? Do you feel a sense of satisfaction? So you can really marry those two up. So you have... um, sit in silence, you have affirmations, you have visualization. Then you have E is exercise. So move your body. He's got different levels for me. Um, I get in the order. I, I move my body first to kind of get, get waken up. Uh, the R is reading. Um, and so can you read something for 10 to 20 minutes and think about, you know, how much Uh, A lot of people have goals of reading X amount of books per year. But if you even read for 15 to 20 minutes a day, you're going to read a lot of books. But you are just starting your day, again, primed with positive intention, with knowledge to set you up for a day of powerful performance that almost makes you unstoppable and unwavering. That when you show up, there's an aura around you because you've done this work. There's no chance you show up and, and you are here for business. You are you mean stuff. Um, so the E is exercise. The R is reading. And then the final S is scribing. And this is journaling. And, uh, you know, one thing about journaling is, and I've been doing it for many, many years, but it's just getting your thoughts down on paper. And sometimes you think I have nothing to, to write. But when you just write, it's, it's the small things that come up. One thing I do is I write, um, I write things that I'm grateful for, but they're things that have happened in the last 24 hours because I'm looking for these little small wins that maybe someone let me in in line. Um, you know, something my kids did, something small in a business meeting that made me smile. And, and they might seem insignificant, but overall they, they played a role. And what I'm doing is I'm training my brain to look for those small things. And I'm also looking for things that are within my control because there's no point in me worrying about things that aren't in my control. So really writing things, allowing just my brain to go free and write things down. And what I do is sometimes I go back a few pages and I just read it again and go, oh, you know, that's, that's what I thought that day. And, and even lean into that curiosity, like why, you know, if it was, it was a sad thought or a negative thought or a trigger, lean into that and say like, why did I feel that? Like, why did that bother me? Why did that, in that meeting, why did that happen? And you can start seeing patterns. You can start getting in front of things, but you can really start getting to know yourself a little bit more and looking eventually to see why you're doing the things you're doing, but also moving forward. How can you prevent them? How can you get in front of them? And a lot of that is just journaling, getting, getting things on paper. And some days I think I have nothing to say. And then two pages later, I'm like, oh, I guess, I guess I had stuff to say. So it's just about freedom and allowing yourself to, to go and to write with almost not no intention, but just whatever comes out, comes out. You know, um, my only focus is, is really to, to write things of, of gratitude there. But a lot of times other nuggets come out that, that I find meaning in, you know, maybe not in the moment, but later. 
And so uh, just in quick summary, this whole podcast was geared around um, the quote, success is something you attract by the person you become. And I know I have lofty goals for this year, but for those of us who are, you know, still in January and feeling a bit like, God, I, I got 11 more months to continue this, how I'm going to go. And I would just say in, in summary, the first one is have a plan, have a goal, have something that's, you know, uh, your, your North star that you're tracking towards. Otherwise, how do you know when you're getting closer, when you're falling off? And, um, one other thing I was going to say is don't negotiate with yourself. If these are your goals, they're there for a reason. Um, I would also ask you to, to really understand and get clear on why are these goals important? Like what, why, what, what do they mean? And what happens if you don't achieve them? Because that will really help you ensure that you have chosen the, the right goals. The second one is back to Mr. David Goggins and doing these hard things. And so showing up, and this might be part of these goals, but showing up daily um, to build these habits and drive that consistency, especially doing the hard things and on the days we don't want to do it. And for us salespeople, there's a lot of things we don't like doing, whether you're a sales leader, a founder, or a sales rep. You know, some of you might not ne like negotiations, the follow-up, the demos, the cold calling the objection handling, um, having difficult conversations, having to, having to let somebody go, having to give some, put someone on a PIP, a performance evaluation, whatever it is, maybe speaking up, finding your voice. These could be hard things, but when you lean into them, you start uh, building that ACC. Again, this is when you dislike that activity and that's okay because even if you start liking it, although you're not building the ACC anymore, I'm sure there's other things you can put in that place um, that you don't initially like, but you start developing the habits to do it on a daily basis. And so how can we eat the frog and do the hard things and not shy away from them? Because again, if we're trying to become somebody um, different, someone new, someone that's going to achieve next level growth, we're not that person yet. So we have to basically take on new areas, uncharted waters, do hard things at a different level. And this might be scary, but aren't you curious to see what you're truly capable of, what you're really made out of? Um, I know I am. And the third one is how, to, you know, again, to help us support this is what kind of morning routine, how can you set your day to set your tone, to anchor yourself, to put your stake in the ground and say, this is how I'm showing up today. Unwavering, confident, whatever those words are, and put some practice and behavior behind it and a routine. So again, when you wake up, it's not just, you're not haphazardly showing up and doing one thing the, this day, the next day. You have a system. And so you're not missing anything. And so again, when you look at um, Hal Elrod's system, he's got savers. And so it's silence or some form of affirmation. Um, a is affirmations. V is visualization. Um, e is exercise. Reading. R is reading. And S is scribing uh, or some form of journaling. So um, I would just say if you want to show up with intention, you're not leaving it up to chance and allowing the world in. Have some form of a morning routine that you don't deviate from it. And what you'll notice is the days that you don't fully do it or you kind of or you miss it, you will definitely notice you're off because your productivity, everything after that is all skewed. And there's days that something happens for whatever reason and I, I've missed it or it's not the same. I'm all over the place. It's because I haven't grounded myself and my body is now used to a certain way of waking up a system and it works for me. And when I deviate from it, I will see it. So um, I would invite you to even try one of these, one of the three areas um, that really speaks to you. Uh, start working on it and then maybe add a second one in and add a third one. And the whole objective of this is again to become the person you are meant to be um, but next level so success is something you attract by the person you become so who do you need to become and and it, we have to we have to do new things not the same if we if we continue to do the same thing the same activities we did in 2023 we are going to get the same results so we have to do new harder next level things to become the person that's going to achieve the next level results and you got to be prepared to do that. You have to be prepared to get uncomfortable or sorry, get comfortable with being uncomfortable, living on the edge, not caring what other people think, beating to your own drum, 
And, you know, it might, it might be tough at first, but once you start seeing a bit of results, getting addicted to the process, you're in your own game. And it's, it's a game of one. And I encourage you to, to stay on that path um, and, and just cheer yourself on. Celebrate those small wins of getting addicted to the process and see, and see where they take you. So hope, hope this was inspiring for you. For those of you who are sticking to the path, keep going. And um, if you've tried any of these, let us know uh, how they worked for you and keep going. Keep going for strong 2024. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.